Couchbase. So a good amount. What about Couchbase Mobile? Okay, so less, but uh, still a good representation there. So great, uh, it's good to have all of you here today. So we've done a lot of really amazing things with Couchbase Mobile over the last year. It all started exactly one year ago with the release of Couchbase Mobile 1.0. For devices, we had support for iOS, Android, OS X, Linux, and Windows. And we had Sync Gateway for secure multi-master synchronization over the internet. Um, in the fall, we released support for .NET for the Microsoft, Xamarin, and Mono runtimes. We also added some really great experimental features like integration with Forest DB. Um, later in the spring, we released support for Unity. And now we're in our sixth release where we have even more great features that I'll talk about uh, a bit more detail later. So we built the most complete NoSQL database solution for um, mobile, for tablets, for wearables, desktops, laptops, IoT, and web apps and games that users will absolutely love. And in our 1.0 release, we had over 3,000 developers building apps with Couchbase Mobile. And today, I'm proud to announce that the Couchbase Mobile community has grown to over 70,000 developers, and they're building some really amazing things. So I'm going to bring up Ali. Ali does product marketing for our mobile products, and she's going to talk about some of the great things our customers are doing with Couchbase Mobile. Thanks, Wayne. So, hi, everybody. As Wayne mentioned, my name is Ali, and I do product marketing here at Couchbase for Couchbase Mobile. So, I hope all of you guys caught Mike from GE's uh, keynote this morning. As I'm sure you all know, GE is one of the largest companies in the world that operates several rather large business segments, including energy, transportation, and more. But what I'm going to talk about today is their Predix platform and how they use Couchbase Mobile to enable some pretty powerful capabilities. So uh, Predix is a GE software platform um, for the industrial internet. It connects things like trains, wind farms, ships, and so much more. Things that are required to work all day, every day, for the next 25, 30, 35 plus years. Connectivity is mission critical. All of these machines are literally everywhere. In the middle of an ocean, on top of a mountain, inside a wind turbine, or even in a rail yard. And on top of that, all of these machines have hundreds of moving parts, all of which need to be tracked and maintained. So what Predix does is it ingests all this data, it stores it, it cleans it, it analyzes it, and then it pushes all of that mission-critical data back to those machine operators. And it does that at massive scale. So Predix has to be reliable 24-7. So, Here's an example of an application that could be built using some of the mobile features of Predix. Let's say that this application manages tasks assigned to workers in a train yard. Um, let's walk through how this would work. This is Wayne's favorite part of this presentation, I think. So this is a diagram of a simple rail yard uh, where train cars can be dropped off for routing. A worker has a mobile device that serves up tasks. So the first thing we have here is a red train coming in. Its task is to drop off two cars to get some maintenance done and then eventually to get rerouted. Next, that train leaves, and the yellow train comes in. Again, they need to leave one train to get some maintenance done, eventually to get rerouted. And last, the blue train comes in, picks up the yellow train, picks up the two red trains, and goes off on its way. How cool is that, guys? Come on. Very cool, right? So the rail, yes, woo! So the rail yard worker is using this app, powered by Predix, to manage and direct all of these tasks. Network connectivity is never reliable, right? But this app always has to work uh, to ensure that tasks are completed reliably and on time. So this is just one example, right? All of these types of apps must always work regardless of network availability. Like I mentioned earlier, the machines that predicts powers can be anywhere, and network connectivity is not guaranteed, right? So while this platform had to keep up and continues to have to keep up with the demands of the growing mobile and IoT industries, the GE team knew that having full offline capabilities was critical. Integrating Couchbase Mobile into the Predix platform gave them this full offline capability, 
and it also saved them close to one year of development time and having to build their own offline solution. So for those of you in this room right now that are questioning whether or not you should be considering offline when you're building your mobile applications, the answer is yes. You know, I really liked what Mike said in his keynote earlier today, offline first is the new mobile first. It's super key to not underestimate um, and then oversimplify your, online, your offline needs. Your apps always have to work, period. You need to build an offline from the beginning. So then we have Ryanair. Ryanair is both the largest European uh, airline by scheduled passengers carried and also the busiest international airline by passenger numbers. Today they have over 3 million users uh, planning over 80,000 flights per day using their mobile app. So the problem that Ryanair was trying to solve for was around user experience and the issue of how long it was taking to complete a booking via their mobile application. Specifically, mobile bookings were taking over five minutes to complete. Their architecture was traditional REST backed by a relational system and for each booking, one megabyte of data was being transferred to drive that process, so calculate it out. That's about 80 gigs of data being delivered to mobile devices per day, much of which was semi-static data. The Ryanair app, as a result, was getting pretty significant negative reviews, and this was primarily attributed to a very sluggish user experience and longer than acceptable booking times. So resolving these user experience issues became a top priority for the Ryanair mobile team, and they took um, a ton of time to evaluate many different solutions, eventually figuring that um, Couchbase Mobile was the best fit. The team took about one month to learn this new mobile stack, and after that one month, it took them one week to move off of the relational backend and onto Couchbase Mobile. They were also able to integrate Couchbase Mobile into both their iOS and Android applications without requiring significant re-architecture. So as a result, bookings went from five minutes to two minutes, and data transfer went from 80 gigabytes to one gigabyte of data per day. And they've already seen a huge increase in customer satisfaction, all without significant um, architecture changes or risk. So for those of you who are looking to start taking advantages of how awesome Couchbase Mobile is right away within your existing mobile applications, there are a ton of ways to do this, and this is one way. Packaging semi-static assets within your application and then using synchronization to update them as they change. Um, so Vlad from Ryanair, who's sitting right here, will be speaking a lot more in depth about this use case in his session later today, so I encourage all of you to attend and, and learn more about that. Uh, so before I move on to the next thing, I hope everyone, I'm loving these signs, has downloaded the Couchbase Connect mobile app. If you haven't, you should do it right now. Uh, we built this in conjunction with one of our development partners, uh, Firefly. They um, have put together a really incredible thing. You can build your own agenda. You can see what's going on throughout the day. I heard there is a phenomenal scavenger hunt that I hope everyone looks at right away. I heard the pictures are actually um, really great on that. They're of me. Um, so make sure you download that and play around with it. It's all built on top of Couchbase Mobile. Um, oh, one thing I will mention also, Mike from GE, who's sitting right here in the front row, uh, will come up at the end of this session to answer any questions that you might have about his use case as well. So taking a step back, let's quickly talk about the mobile database market and when this online first to offline first trend really began. The beginning of time in mobile as we know it today was 2007 with the release of the first iPhone. And from 2007 through today, the primary way to power mobile apps is via REST. So while REST allows developers to take this proven architectural approach and apply it to mobile platforms, it also means that mobile apps, like web apps, will only work when you have a network connection. Then we get to 2010, where there, there was a shift in sync capabilities that would move data to and from other endpoints, like the cloud. Now, for the record, this wasn't really a new approach, but it was more of a reemergence of the enterprise sync technologies of the late 1990s. Back then, you would see companies like Oracle, Siebel, SAP, and others use local data plus sync technology to enable their remote sales forces on their laptops, and there are a ton of other examples like this. Um, but then sync kind of died off with this shift to web apps and the promise of you know, the ubiquitous wireless network. So going back to today, there's now this shift towards an offline first enterprise and the need to have mobile apps that always work with or without a network connection. 
So in addition to Couchbase Mobile over the past year and a half, all the major cloud providers, including Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, have all added some form of sync um, and offline capability to their mobile offerings. The point here is that the major players in the market all have sync built in. So with that, let's bring Wayne back up, who can tell us why sync is so important. Thanks, Ali. So why is sync so important? So let's start by looking at a typical deployment topology of today's mobile apps. Most mobile applications today use a remote data strategy that relies on data that exists in the cloud and they require a network connection to access that data. So if the network is available, then the app typically works as expected. But as the network degrades, the application performance degrades. This is why we have things like activity indicators and progress bars, is to let the users know that we're trying to do what they asked us to do, but things aren't moving as fast as we'd like, so just hold on a second and we'll get up and running in a minute. So, and then when the network completely goes away, you see things like this, sorry, no internet, try again later, so your applications just cease to work when it have no access to the data that they require. So the real problem here is actually the location of data. It isn't the network requirement, it's the fact that the data is located in the cloud. So when data is not located on the device or located locally, there are always gonna be situations where the data is not available. And if your application depends on the data to operate, then the applications aren't gonna work when the data is not available and you don't have a network connection. So the solution, is local data in addition to remote data, and then some mechanism to reconcile the differences between your local and remote stores. And synchronization does that for us. So as a solution, you have remote data, local data, and synchronization, and you build everything on top of that architecture. So what does it mean for apps when you build them this way? Well, it means that apps will always work regardless of whether or not you have an internet connection. It means that they'll always be fast regardless of the performance of the internet connection that you have. That includes even writing really big files when you have a great internet connection. So from writing a 10 megabit file to a network connection, it's gonna take several seconds even if that connection is great. Um, you know, maybe even 10, 20, 30 seconds. But if you're writing all that stuff local, it writes it local, it's a couple milliseconds to write the file, and then it syncs as fast as it can as, as much as the network will allow. And then applications, obviously, everyone loves them because they're always fast, they're always available. You know, it's not just about creating a beautiful app, it's also one that's a, a joy to use because it actually works when you want it to work. So let's talk a little bit about Couchbase Mobile and how it can help you solve these problems. So Couchbase Mobile uh, comprises of three components. There's Couchbase Lite, that's our embedded NoSQL database that runs locally on the device. There's Sync Gateway, that's an internet-facing cloud component that securely syncs data between the Couchbase Lite instance and the cloud. And then you have Couchbase Server in the cloud backing all of this, and that's our highly scalable, high-performance NoSQL database uh, for the cloud. So let's dive down a little into each component, um, starting with Couchbase Lite. So Couchbase Lite uh, is fully featured. It has all of the features of our server database, plus a number of other features associated with uh, um, revision handling and conflict resolution. Um, it's super lightweight, weighing in at about 500 kilobytes on most platforms. Java is a little bit heavier than that. Um, it's cross-platform, so we're really focused on cross-platform portability, and we write all of our code native from the ground up for Couchbase Lite, and we support a bunch of different platforms. So we have a, an Objective-C version for supporting all of the Apple technologies, that's iOS and OS X. Our Java version supports any platform that can run a J2SE compliant JVM. So that's Android, Linux, Windows, and a ton of other platforms. And then our C-sharp platform supports all the .NET runtimes. So that's Microsoft, Mono, Unity, and Xamarin. And Couchbase Lite is secure. Now I have a whole section on security towards the end of this uh, session, so I'll, I'll leave all of that till then, but it's secure and I'll cover the why in a minute. And of course it has our awesome flexible JSON object model, just like the server. So one modeling uh, language throughout the entire stack with no transformations. 
All right, looking at Sync Gateway. So Sync Gateway, again, is the cloud component. It lives on the boundary of your public and private clouds, and it resolves a number of application level replication and security concerns, allowing you to securely synchronize your database over the internet. Uh, for user authentication, we have a pluggable auth system. We ship with a number of popular public authentication providers like Facebook, or you can write your own custom provider. You also can restrict access to the system to authenticated users or optionally allow unauthenticated guest users. We have data uh, read-write policies, very fine grain on the data on the uh, read side. We actually allow uh, read side permissions down to the document level. And then on the write side, which is decoupled from read side permissions, you have granularity down to the field level. And backing all of this up is Couchbase server. So this is our uh, highly scalable um, uh, NoSQL cloud database. Uh, you can start with a few nodes and scale out as you need more capacity. Your data um, is always going to be available super fast. And it'll be available all the time. And again, it has our flexible JSON object model, just like mobile. One modeling language throughout the stack with no, no transformation. So really easy to build both on the server side and the mobile side. So now I'm going to jump down into a couple of uh, cool features in a Couchbase um, Lite and Sync Gateway. Um, and show you how those work and how you can take advantage of them. So the first is change events. So we've made it really easy to find out what data changes in our database, both client side and server side. So let's look at how change events work in Couchbase Mobile. So this is a typical deployment of Couchbase Mobile, a really simple one. You have Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway deployed in the cloud, and you have Couchbase Lite running on a mobile device. Starting client side, we have a number of uh, different event scopes for data change. The topmost is the database itself, so you can listen to change events on the database and any data that's flowing into the, into the database, any changes that occur either locally or remotely via synchronization, you'll be notified in your event callback, and this is just standard event notification depending on what programming language you're using. It's all exactly how you would do with any other event handling. The next scope is at the document level. So if you'd like to listen to changes on a specific document, say for the settings of an app or for the detail of some form, a list form application, you can list, listen to those changes on the document itself. And when they occur either locally through user interaction or through synchronization from some other user, uh, you'll be notified in your event callback and you can refresh your UIs in real time. But you only have one code path, whether the data is changing locally or remotely. It's a really great way to to code. And then we have the last scope being query, where you have a set of documents that have come back in a query, and you want to know when those results have changed. We'll actually call you with an event callback um, and let you know that your data set has changed so you can refresh your list or whatever else you're driving from that, that data set. And there's one other event notification for replication, but um, I, I won't go into that too much detail. But if you're looking for uh, change events when a replication occurs, we, we support that also. Okay, now moving server side, we've just added in 1.1 uh, event, events to Sync Gateway. So we support one event today, and that's the on document changed event. And the second one there, I have it kind of, you probably can't read it, it says on database change, but you can simulate a database change event using the document change uh, configuration. I'll show you how to do that. So let's look at how you configure Sync Gateway to notify you of of events. So this is a configuration in the Sync Gateway config file. You set up your uh, event handlers. You can have many of those. It's an, uh, an array of document change event handlers. Um, in here, we have a handler type of a webhook. That's the type of event handler we handle today with an endpoint for when the data changes, where we're going to send that data. So here we have a URL. We actually also have an optional filter function where we're going to filter on only send over documents that are of type article. Now, one of the other great things about the URL feature is it also supports uh, uh, secure over SSL and authentication. So you can actually securely process events over the internet by setting up your username and password in your endpoint and setting it to run over SSL. And now what does it look like to simulate a, a database change event? Well, you just remove the filter. So now all the documents as they change are going to flow over that 
that endpoint. And you can use the same secure mechanisms that I talked about before. So that's change events. Uh, now we're talking about deployment topology. So how can I deploy couch-based mobile? So these are the three most popular deployment topologies that we see from our customers and users. The most popular by far is a star topology. The next most popular is a tree topology. And then the next most popular and pretty cool um, one is mesh topology using peer-to-peer. -peer. So I'll, I'll dive into each one of these, show you how you actually can set it up, also talk to you a little bit about the different characteristics of each deployment topology. So this is the star topology. We have a setup in the cloud of Couchbase server on the far right with some sync gateway nodes front-ended by a load balancer. You can optionally attach a web server to Sync Gateway through the load balancer itself, or you can build companion web apps in addition to your mobile apps. So in this topology, if the devices that are running Couchbase Lite locally lose connection to the global network, they'll continue to operate. But one of the other characteristics of them is that they actually won't continue sharing data with each other. They're not connected to each other, so they can't share data. Now, when they regain their connection to the, to the global network, that's when their data on each device will be shared with the, both the cloud and other devices that have access to that data. So that's where a tree topology comes in. If you want a different type of isolation, and this is partition tolerance and different levels, uh, you can set up um, Couchbase Mobile and Sync Gateway and a tree topology. So let's look at this like it's a brick and mortar retail store. So we have in the cloud, we have a Couchbase server cluster, some sync gateway nodes, front-ended by a load balancer, and optionally a web server. In the retail store, we have an additional deployment of a smaller Couchbase server cluster for persistence. We have a smaller set of sync gateways, and we have Couchbase Lite instances running on devices that are synchronizing not with the global data center, but with the sync gateway that's in the store data center. So what happens here, is when the store loses connectivity with the global network, the devices continue to operate, but they also continue sharing data with each other. So that's a great way to actually share data and isolate the actual segments of the network that are tolerant to partition. All right, so here's Mesh. So Mesh looks a lot like Star. On the cloud side, you have Couchbase Server, Sync Gateway, Optional Load Balancer, sorry, not Optional Load Balancer, Load Balancer, Optional Web Server. And then you have Couchbase Lite instances talking to the global data center. The Couchbase Lite instances also have a line that they're sharing with each other. That's actually a peer-to-peer -peer network between the devices. So when they lose, we'll again use the retail store example. So when they lose connectivity with the global data center, they continue to operate and they continue to uh, share data with each other, another way to share data among devices. One of the other great things you can do with peer-to-peer -peer technology is we have another set of devices. Let's imagine they left the retail store, maybe went out onto the loading dock where it doesn't have network coverage. Those devices are out scanning inventory as it's coming off a truck, and they're also sharing that inventory data with each other as they scan, so they avoid things like double scans and things like this that go on in inventory management. And then when the devices re rejoin the, the uh, store network or rejoin the global network, they'll then synchronize with the other devices in the cloud. All right, so that's topology. Now let's talk a little bit about security. So there are five key security concerns when dealing with data synchronization and decentralized storage of data. There's user authentication, there's data read-write access, data transport on the wire, data storage on the device, and data storage in the cloud. So let me look at how Couchbase Mobile resolves each of these concerns. So again, we have a typical deployment of Couchbase Mobile, Server, Sync Gateway, Couchbase Lite. For user authentication, again, we support pluggable auth. We ship with a number of public authentication providers. Like I talked about before, you can write your own custom provider. You can also configure the system to allow only authenticated users, optionally allow guest users. And you can also uh, allow both authenticated and unauthenticated users. For read-write access, also handled in Sync Gateway, there are some security hints you can apply on the Couchbase Lite side, but generally, Couchbase Lite's in the wild, so the real security as far as protecting the cluster is concerned is in Sync Gateway. We have a set of fine-grained tools that allow you to control data access to individual users 
or roles. So we have a user grouping mechanism that's similar to the role mechanism that you're probably all familiar with. On the read side, permissions are again down to the document level, write side down to the field level. Okay, so for data transport on the wire for data in motion, it's all secured over TLS. Data storage on the device for data at rest on the device is done using the device's fi um, built-in file system encryption. And soon we'll also be adding security on top of that. We're gonna be adding data level encryption in, in addition to file system encryption. So if you provide us with a set of encryption keys, we'll encrypt and decrypt the data as you read it and write it from the database locally. And we'll be adding data lease policies where you can configure lease policies for the data and the device doesn't renew the policies for that data. It'll automatically be deleted when they expire. And then for data at rest in the cloud, you can secure Couchbase server in a secure cloud and you can optionally configure its nodes to use file system encryption on the cloud side. Okay, so with Couchbase Mobile, we have support for out of the box and custom authentication providers. We have granular data read write access policies. We have secure transport on the wire, secure storage on the device, and secure storage in the cloud. All right, so we have a bunch of great mobile sessions uh, planned for you guys over the next couple of days. And here are some of the highlights I think you'll be interested in. So we have 101 and 102, which is getting started with Couchbase Mobile. So that's gonna be Couchbase Lite and Sync Gateway. So with 101, you'll know what it means to actually build a Couchbase Lite uh, application. And then with 102, what it means to add synchronization, security, et cetera, through, a sync, through sync Gateway. 103 is about building peer-to-peer -peer apps. So it's a really great way to understand what you can build and how you can build apps that work in a cloudless infrastructure. 104 is about building games. So if you're interested in games or a game developer and you wanna know how Couchbase Mobile can help you, go to 104. And then we have some advanced uh, sessions for scaling, deploying in the cloud, building companion web apps for your native mobile apps. And then we have some, some great customer and user sessions from GE, which Mike presented earlier. Then we have Ryanair, PVH, Viewit, and manuscriptapp.com. So now I'm gonna open it up to q and I'm gonna have Mike from GE join me. And you can ask either myself or Mike any questions you like and we'll, we'll answer them. So go ahead. Go ahead. The network, yeah. How do we manage the peer-to-peer? -peer? So our replication protocol is the same between the server? Okay, yes. So the question was during peer-to-peer -peer replication, um, how is the replication managed? So the replication between a device and sync gateway is the same, uses the same protocol for replicating between two Couchbase Lite instances. So you expose a listener on the device that's going to um, serve as the passive participant in the replication process. The then active participant attaches to those replication endpoints and replicates with the database. There's security aspects to that, discovery aspects to that, that um, if you want, you can talk to me afterwards and I can get more detail. Go ahead. So we support multi, so the question is when you have a combination of star and mesh, uh, do you have to manage the replication separately? Uh, yeah, so 103, um, we'll have details on that. Um, also some of the other sessions, but I'll go ahead and just answer it high level right now, is that um, replication is multi-master replication. A database can replicate with multiple endpoints at the same time. So you can have a single Couchbase Lite instance replicating with the cloud and simultaneously replicating with another Couchbase Lite instance. 
that's the key differentiator for multi-master replications that can occur in, in uh, at the same time. Go ahead. Right here. Yes. Okay, the question was about conflict resolution and how we handle that. So we have revision trees, and every, every edit to a document becomes a revision in the tree, and there's always going to be an active revision in that tree. Now we have a default conflict resolution uh, algorithm that chooses the most active branch in the revision tree, but you can get involved in that and customize it and create a custom conflict resolution uh, algorithm. Uh, do custom conflict resolution. And that can happen client side, it can also happen server side. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, it works for chatting. Latency is in the, say, three second range um, for changing on one device up to the server, propagating out to the other devices. So anything under three minutes, um, Sorry, three seconds is uh, wouldn't be a good fit, but chat three seconds is very very acceptable in a chat application. Go ahead. Uh, question regarding your uh, how to say light. Uh, you have it native in Android and in iPhone. Do mm -hmm. you have it also in the web app, web browser? Uh, okay, so we have support. Um, PouchDB DB works with Sync Gateway. If you want to use PouchDB, that's an open source project of um, a JavaScript database that runs inside of JavaScript runtimes. Um, in the future, we will have a, a JavaScript version. We don't have that on the timeline yet, but we will at some point. But um, we contribute to the PouchDB project, and you can use that. Oh, sorry, the question, guys, was if we have a JavaScript version of CouchBase Lite. Go ahead. So if I understand the question, it's uh, what was the first replication scenario? Okay, the first uh, replication. Well, the most complicated. Most complicated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the question was, what's the most complicated replication scenario that Mike and his team have dealt with? Yeah. So. Uh, when we were building the, uh, working with the team that was building this application for the rail yard where they're moving cars around, which, which Ali uh, talked about, uh, what we were, um, the way we approached it at first was you'd get the, the document of the track with the cars on it, and you would change that document, and that would replicate to the, uh, if you were offline, when you came back online, it would replicate, mm -hmm. and everybody would see that. Problem was, there's this, the, the Couchbase server was not the source of truth. It was the, the train management system behind it. And so we had to delay the replication until the train management system said, yes, you know, I, I accept this transaction. I, you, you've moved this big train from point A to point B, uh, or this car, uh, train car. And so, so we came up with the, um, this uh, CQRS, and we didn't come up with that, but we, f we fell, that pattern emerged where you, re you separate the reads from the writes. So in that case, we changed to, you, the, move, the move became a command, move the car from track A to track B, and then the move gets, we create a document, a command document, and that replicates to the server. There's a, there's a command processor that like a change worker gets sees that there's a, a new uh, command document, takes it, picks it up, and uh, will then um, hand that off to a, to another service, a microservice that is really specific to the train management system. So it negotiates with the train management system, resolves the move, and whether it's a success or failure, then that will then. Um, through the mobile sync gateway, we talk directly through using the REST interface through that to make the change to the, to the document, and then that will then replicate out to everybody. So this was, 
this worked really well for us. So, so that, was, that was the most complex one we, we dealt with. You know, it took us a few days to, to get, figure that out. But uh, once it's sort of, this, you know, I want to say one other thing about this. What I find with uh, Couchbase Mobile and Couchbase is as, as you get more comfortable, more familiar with these things, some of these problems that were really difficult that we're dealing with become a lot simpler. So um, it's really a mind shift that, um, that we had to go through. Okay, great. Um, whoa, hey guys. Um, I'm gonna have to cut it off because we're at the end of our session, but I'm gonna stick around. Mike, can you stick around also? Okay. And we'll just take questions. Um, let's just go to the back of the room so that um, the new session, the next session can come in and, and take over. But we'll take questions out there and you can talk to me and, and Mike directly. 